Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Flow by Mihai Cheeks and Mihai. When you're in the middle of a project or task and all of a sudden time and space seem to have collapsed, how does that make you feel? Instead of feeling guilty, you feel a profound sense of joy because you've achieved something meaningful. Psychologists like Mihai Cheeks and Mihai, who wrote the seminal book on the subject of flow states, explain that the most profound forms of happiness come from optimal experiences, in which we are completely immersed in a task. He adheres to the school of thought that believes that finding purpose in one's life is the key to happiness. However, what is the significance of this? To Viktor Frankl, it's about finding meaning in one's life and the strength to persevere in the face of adversity. Based on the Japanese term Ikigai, Hector Garza and Francesc Marias claim that despite our abundance of material goods, we are not truly content. Mihai Cheeks and Mihai agrees. We'll take a quick look at one of the most important and significant books on flow and how mastering our productivity and creativity results in an abundance of happiness. He suggests that happiness comes from having more control, being productive and useful. When we're in a state of flow, we don't just enjoy our work, we enjoy everything we do. Isn't it strange that we are so dissatisfied despite the fact that we have so much more? Mihai Cheeks and Mihai explains two reasons for our increasing dissatisfaction and anxiety. Our knowledge of the harshness of the universe comes from a short history of nearly everything, sapiens, and homo deus. Famine, war, drastic climate change, plagues, and disease are just a few of the perils we've faced as a species as we've struggled to stay alive. Narrative has helped to alleviate some of harangst. Unhappiness arises because the facts don't fit the narrative we've been fed, and we're led to believe that doing things we don't want to do is necessary in the interests of our own well-being or that it's a valuable learning experience. We can see examples of this in numerous historical uprisings. Despite the fact that Marie Antoinette did not say, let them eat cake. The starving masses must have been shocked to see a couple with so much wealth and success when they were already struggling to survive. After being told they're fine when they're not, many people are left feeling betrayed and angry. In Sheikh Sent Mihai's view, we tend to overcompensate or apply metaphorical band-aids when we realize that life is difficult. We tend to brush things under the rug, divert our attention to materialistic pursuits and the pursuit of immediate gratification, or put all our efforts into achieving professional success. For example, we might try to fix our problems by following a new diet or experimenting with a new hairstyle. Drugs and alcohol can be used as a form of escapism. We often choose to hand over the reins to a higher power by focusing on religion. For the time being, however, these distractions may provide some relief. Consequently, anxiety and apathy set in, and we begin to question our beliefs about the world around us. In the end, we must accept that problems will never go away. There is always a new issue to deal with as soon as we solve the one we had before. Sisyphean tasks abound in life, and we must learn to deal with the dangers and threats that come with it. There will be new diseases and conflicts to deal with as we get rid of old ones. Even in the midst of adversity, we must cultivate the ability to appreciate the good in the world and find joy in the little things. These feelings of dissatisfaction and anxiety can be alleviated by adopting a more positive attitude. Optimal feelings of well-being. Most of us thrive in environments where we can maintain some measure of order and predictability. We have a hard time staying focused when things are hectic. But when we're absorbed in something, our minds are at their most peaceful. When we're focused on a task, we can tune out everything else and simply enjoy the journey. Adult coloring books, puzzles, and Lego are becoming more popular with adults than with children, according to a recent survey. It's not just about the things we enjoy doing to take our minds off of the chaos around us when we're in a state of flow. When we're working hard and pushing ourselves to the limit, we can feel this same sense of flow. Athletes are constantly pushing themselves, and they achieve a state of optimum flow as a result. As a result, even though the physical and mental toll of this training and practice can be exhausting, it's an experience that most people will never forget because it sets them up for success in the future. I'm going to be silent for the time being. Distractions, tangents, noise, bright lights, alerts, and reminders are all examples of this. How many times have you entered a room, forgotten why you're there, and then done something you didn't intend to? Count the number of times you've fallen down a rabbit hole. One of the most important things we can do to be happy is to learn to control our thoughts and feelings. There are a lot of things that we do every day that are unconscious, but we must cultivate our awareness so that we can experience flow. When we're conscious, we're in control of our thoughts, actions, and perceptions. Many of the things we do on a daily basis, 
such as our habits, are not influenced by our conscious. The brain is capable of processing 125 bits of data per second, which equates to about 500,000 per hour. Although our brains are incredibly powerful, they also develop a habit of processing information inefficiently in order to conserve energy. It's because of this that tasks like reading are difficult at first, but become easier over time. Learning a new skill can be exhausting because our brains are constantly processing information. It is Csikszentmihalyi's contention that we seek out relaxing experiences in order to unwind. Over time, our capacity to be fully conscious diminishes. We live in an age of visual overload, where we are constantly confronted with things vying for our attention at all hours of the day. Consciousness is taxing because it necessitates that we pay attention to and process everything that comes our way. During times of high activity, our minds go into overdrive, attempting to make sense of the chaos, which makes us anxious. In addition, any information that doesn't support our goals, such as extraneous information, can be distracting and tempt us into procrastination, making us less likely to get things done. He calls this psychic entropy or disorder in consciousness. Our disorder in consciousness or psychic entropy occurs when we're interrupted by email, social media, a phone call, or the temptation of the kettle and a cookie while we're trying to complete a task. A quick 10-minute break might be all we need. Flow is impossible to achieve if we are unable to concentrate. Flow is critical, as well. In order to achieve inner order, or order in consciousness, we must focus all of our energy on a single task. For the most part, we're wasting our time and doing nothing. According to the attention economy theory, our minds and the things we pay attention to have become valuable commodities. Every day, we are bombarded with stimuli that compete for our attention, and we must learn to tune out the noise and direct our focus inward. Adapting to the changes. There are numerous advantages to utilizing the flow state and training our attention spans. Isn't it demoralizing to waste your time online and come away with nothing to show for it? Our happiness and self-confidence improve when we cultivate a work ethic that emphasizes the importance of flow. Reaching our goals and seeing real progress and results fills us with joy, excitement, and reduces our levels of anxiety enormously. As a result, even the most mundane of tasks become less tedious when they are part of a larger picture. It is possible to find greater satisfaction in the smallest of tasks if they are part of a larger plan. In addition, people who are capable of maximizing flow and realizing their potential tend to be more complex than those who aren't. They are constantly acquiring new skills and knowledge, and they are more balanced fully conscious, and happy as a result. It's easy to tell when you're in the zone when you're having fun and getting a lot done. The difference between pleasure and enjoyment is clear here. Pleasure is frequently characterized by a desire for immediate gratification and novelty rather than a sense of long-term satisfaction. Pleasure has a way of deceiving us. Even though browsing the web or binge-watching a show may make you happy in the short term, it has little effect on your long-term happiness. It's rare for pleasure to have a direct impact on personal development. In contrast, enjoyment necessitates a greater investment of time and effort and is more closely associated with the concept of delayed gratification and a focus on the overall experience. When we push ourselves and achieve things we never thought were possible, we feel like we've accomplished something great. It's a great feeling, isn't it, when you accomplish something you thought was impossible. In the end, it's a feeling that lasts a lifetime and is one of the most rewarding. Pushing ourselves to learn and grow as individuals gives us a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. Csikszentmihalyi discusses the nine components of pleasure. It may not be possible to experience all nine at once, but there are a number of factors that distinguish enjoyment from pleasure. As long as we're having fun, we're fully engaged in the task at hand. It's easy to lose track of time when we're occupied with the task at hand. We enjoy things because we don't have a specific end in mind. When we start something, we often don't give it our full attention until a long time later. Having a good time is also accompanied by immediate gratification. Our accomplishments are immediately recognized by others or ourselves, and we take great pleasure in that. To do something that you enjoy, you already know what you need to do but you also learn new things along the way. The sense of order and control we have while immersed makes us believe we're in a different place. All other emotions fade away, time and space collapse, and our minds are completely focused on the task at hand when we're having a good time. Flow removes all of our anxiety and self-consciousness, and because of this, we return to the experience over and over. This wonderful autotelic quality of enjoyment draws us to it. The flow stages. Flow is a gradual process that occurs over time. We get a kick out of the fact that we enjoy and participate in the experience when we try something new for the first time. We keep going because it appears as if we're mastering a new skill at every step. This is the first step. As soon as we've mastered the fundamentals, 
The challenge of rising to the next level seems overwhelming. Often, we get bored or anxious at this point because we can't break through a barrier or because we don't believe we'll improve fast or effectively enough. As a result, we must strive to reach the next level. There's a fine line between stretching ourselves too far and becoming paralyzed by the prospect of failure. Making sure we're challenging ourselves while not going overboard is absolutely essential. It's easier for some people to get into the zone. Some people are more prone to a flow-like state because of their context, experiences, and ingrained habits. People who are autotelic are capable of setting goals, pursuing them, and making adjustments along the way. Additionally, they are able to adapt their work schedules and goals based on their current environment. They also find it easier to focus and work hard if they have a wide variety of interests. Autotelic people are able to cope with adversity because they can enjoy a variety of activities. They go out of their way to have fun and don't wait for things to go their way. One of its many names is flow. Even if flow isn't something that comes naturally to you, there is a methodology for achieving a higher level of flow. To begin, take a seat and jot down your objectives. Then put them in order of importance. Make a list of your long-term and short-term goals, and then write down any steps you need to take to get there. After you've made a list of your objectives, consider the route you want to take to get there. To avoid losing momentum, it's important not to be overly optimistic about your progress. You want to set attainable goals that challenge you but don't cause you to feel overwhelmed. Consider the fact that you want them to be large enough to keep your attention. If you're bored, it's time to step up your game and challenge yourself. An excellent method for reducing boredom is to thoroughly comprehend the task at hand and all of its subtasks. The more you know about your goal, the more enthused and motivated you'll be to achieve it. In general, most jobs require a diverse set of abilities. Consider your project as a whole and embrace learning about each of its components. It's important to keep in mind the golden rule of boredom. Boredom is a sign that something is wrong with the way you are doing things. As your skills and mindset evolve, so must your ability to achieve a state of euphoria. Increase your capacity for introspection. To get into a state of flow, you need to use your mind to prepare yourself. Cheek Sent Me High recommends writing, reading, and engaging in activities that stimulate the brain. Prose is not the only form of writing that exists. Poems, letters, journals, and even crossword puzzles are excellent ways to exercise the brain. Crossword puzzles are exceptional in that they require a wide range of abilities and provide a satisfying sense of completion. Aside from that, the more crosswords one does, the better one becomes at solving them. It's also critical to have a grasp of the past. Knowing our roots, developing empathy, and interacting with the past help us become more aware of who we are. As well as reading history, going to art galleries and museums, and telling stories with your family, it's all part of learning about history. When we're at work, we're more likely to be in a state of flow. We can, however, make adjustments to our leisure activities and make better use of our downtime. When we're at work, we're in flow 54% of the time, whereas when we're at home, we're only in flow 18% of the time. When we aren't focused or productive, we become apathetic and lethargic, and we need to be aware of this. With each passing day that passes, it becomes more difficult to break out of this pattern of thinking and feeling. When it comes to relationships, it's good to know that we can also experience flow. Because they play games that require them to use their imaginations extensively, children have an advantage in this area. Let your inner child out and play with your friends and co-workers, collaborate, have meaningful conversations, play games, and be fully present in the moment with your loved ones. In the end, why did you get into this situation in the first place? What are your long-term objectives? Flow is a book about finding peace in a world that can be both confusing and frightening at times. Our lives become more meaningful and rewarding when we engage in activities and pursuits that we find meaningful. We all want a life that is well-balanced. And this doesn't come from relying on band-aid fixes or chasing after temporary pleasures. You can achieve harmony, balance, and significance only after you have determined your mission. If you're looking for a reason to get up in the morning, look inward and find out what drives you. Determine what makes you unique and what qualities can be used to add value to your life. Why not go after your dream or take a risk? Keep in mind that you are a self-aware being with free will and only one life to live on this planet. It's time to take a good hard look in the mirror and assess your worth. You'll have to manage your expectations, of course, because it's not going to be easy. It's unlikely that you'll be exceptional right away, and getting into a state of flow isn't going to be an easy process. It will be difficult. However, the message is that while no one person can do everything, we can all do more together. The root of unhappiness is stifling and squandering one's potential. Boredom is out of the question, we must adapt. 
Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.